Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh. And I literally wrote it. Joined by attorney Aaron Morris. How are you doing today? Hey, so good. How are you? Doing good. You look crooked. Let's fix Emma. that. There, you know. There we go. All right, you're ready for my close up. Yes, let's do it. Let me blow up the screen. I'll focus on one little one. How you been? So good. How have you been? I am doing a lot better. We have Gabby with us. Yay! So you can, can squeeze you her wanna, right there. Want to pop in over here? We we have been quarantining together in a way. <laughs> Sort of a band yeah. social distancing. Yeah, you know, mostly we need to um, have uh, a lot of work that we have to do together, our hearings that we do together. So um, I know that this doesn't look like social distancing, but we have a lot of um, hearings and prep for trials because we're now ha we're now going to be holding a few trials this coming couple of weeks. Oh, so trials are still going on. Nice. Yeah, yeah, which for a while they they were specifically not doing trials. They were doing only hearings and, and limiting on evidence. That isn't to say that we couldn't object if we thought that it being in person was really valuable and something that was absolutely necessary. We mm. absolutely that. But in order to help certain cases move along, if we didn't have the type of evidence that couldn't be presented virtually, um, you know, evidence that can be presented virtually, we will do so. We will advocate pretty strongly for moving those cases along. So there's no stopping cases are still going forward. There ain't no stopping Aaron Moore. <laughs> Actually, they run pretty smoothly. I, the virtual I, hearing. I don't hate it. Yeah, I, either. I hope that we keep it. We were talking about this earlier. I really hope that we end up keeping this the virtual appearances. For example, yesterday I had a hearing, and in Seminole County they do cattle call hearings. And what's a cattle call hearing? So it's where they, they set up a hearing at a time that they they give everybody the same time. And it's six to seven hearings, no matter the length. And they probably try to limit it to how many they believe they could hear in that time. Um, so instead of giving, you know, your cases at 1.30, your cases at 2, your cases at 3, and your cases at 4, they say 1.30 for everybody, and you just wait your turn until the judge calls it up. The judge kind of makes some discretion on who who they think they could get done with first, probably in an effort to just be more efficient and if they can handle cases quicker than expected. But one case before us had some major technical difficulties, and unfortunately, the judge just didn't get to us. Oh, man. So the JA sent us an email, was like, really sorry, we have to reschedule, which probably wasn't as bad because, and I'm, I'm definitely, you know, I, if I had to go there and wait, I'd have to charge my client. I would obviously only charge them a really reduced fee, but something because I lost the whole afternoon. Yeah. But I spent the entire time really, you know, getting some other work done. So for that reason, I did not. I'm not going to charge my client at all. No. So it ended up. It, That's very fair. I right. <laughs> I you know, and I I hope that a lot of these things they they continue to allow us to do in a fair. Now, is it, is it that like everyone tries to jump in on these cattle call hearings or? No, the judge calls them up. Yeah. Calls them up. So very often with injunctions, they're just cattle calls. So you get, you know, your your order to appear and you could have 20 other people, you know, waiting for their injunction because you don't really know when it's going to, you know, when you're going to be in front of the judge. Right. Oh, wow. Right. So I've got a few questions real quick before we even jump into them. Let's catch up with uh, everything that's gone on in the past week. <laughs> Um, Court closures are extended. Oh. July second. <laughs> it's July second. I thought it was July. Is July second or July third? July second. I think 2nd? it's the second. Oh, okay. They could have waited after the Fourth of July holiday. Why did you know? That's strange. It sounds really bizarre. Yeah, I know. And are they going to extend it again? <laughs> that and that's one question I've been hearing uh, th th throughout my circle. That do you think that they'll do another uh, stay-at-home order? Nobody knows. Yeah, right. I don't think anybody knows. We are all flying by the seat of our pants. The fair no one says that they know, immediately should not believe them. Just like if somebody says that they could guarantee you results in a courtroom, mm -hmm. I can guarantee run. Because <laughs> you can't. You can't guarantee. You don't know what variables. Mm -hmm. Also, at least in my position, even if I feel very strongly about what the law says, what I understand my client to have told me, 
I don't ever have a way to know from my client if they didn't tell me all of the truth or they left out a piece of information that was relevant. So if I were to guarantee them some result and then opposing counsel comes back and is like, well, have you seen this, right? You know, some Perry Mason. <laughs> 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 then, you know, it totally changes what, what my perception was. Or, you know, maybe the judge asks a question exactly, and our client responds in a way that is nasty or rude. And the judge goes, I think you lied. Because that's also what the judge is testing, your veracity in court. And the mm. credibility of the witness. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. A lot of factors in there right there. Mm. Um, how was your sync with the mic? What? The what? <laughs> Did that happen? Did what? that happen? What's today? What's the day? <laughs> today is the 7th. Oh. So yeah, Cinco de Mayo just happened this week. Uh, I saw a lot of things through uh, social media, a lot of virtual interactions, drinking at home. But how, how was your guys' uh, Cinco de Mayo? Actually, I was here in the office, and so I have to drive down North Orange Avenue to get home. The I-4 is closed down. Um, and there were people out. People were partying. People were having fun. Good for them, I suppose. I know. I feel like it's... um. I, I have FOMO. I really do. Me too. Yep. I But it's so funny. I had a colleague... I have a case with who had a notice of unavailability for near the entire month of March. Mm -hmm. And obviously most of this happened approximately mid-March. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I was making a joke with a, a you know, with, with a few people that if, imagine that he took a vacation where, you know, as an attorney with a very stressful job, perhaps in an unwind and unplug and have your vacation, what he did was he went to a cabin in the woods. And this is not true. This is not what he did. But I just <laughs> could you imagine the scenario? Right, right. Could you imagine the scenario? He went to a cabin in the woods, and he, you know, was completely unplugged. <laughs> and you know, him and his wife went hiking and they fishing and had like a nice, quiet, unplugged, you know, three weeks or so. Um, he leaves, and the world is fine. And then he comes back to the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> right? It's like the first. The first episode of The Walking Dead. <laughs> I'm like, this guy must be I, coming back to a wild time. I think well, this actually reality. happened to Russell Brand because yeah. he uh, there was uh, an article I read that he once a year will go off just off the grid, yeah. off to the middle right. of nowhere, which makes sense, right? For mental health, Absolutely. I recommend yeah. it. I yeah. won't do it. <laughs> but but yeah, he came back and th it was three weeks after the whole uh, quarantine. Stay at home order, uh, stay at home order to put in place. And he's like, what? Yeah. So that snare right there actually happened to Russell Brand. <laughs> Came back to the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it would, I don't think it'd be fair if we can just like reschedule Cinco de Mayo, St. Patty's Day, all these fun holidays. That's that right. We usually happens. go out. But that I, one was the one to miss for me. My family, I have a lot of Irish heritage in my family. You know, I, damn shame. <laughs> No, I had people uh, messaging me on Cinco de Mayo, like, oh, have, you know, have the least Cinco de Mayo. I'm like, it's Tuesday. Yeah. It's really not. It's really not. I know. Big... Cinco de Mayo happened on Taco Tuesday. Oh. This was totally unfair of us to miss. This would have been perfect. But... I know. I probably would have said that the office was closed on Wednesday if it was normal world. Yeah, you're a good boss. She's oh a good my God! Yeah. Morris is a good boss. I, I do. <laughs> you can stay. <laughs> um, I, I have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I had done that one year because you know, actually, the past few years. St. Patrick's Day seems to be falling on like weekends. Yeah. But there was one year um, it fell in the middle of the week, and I, I was like, hey, you know, we're all going to have the Irish flu tomorrow. <laughs> so how about we call not St. Patrick's Day, but the 18th is our firm holiday. Oh, my goodness. So we'll just... It's like the Monday after Super Bowl Sunday. They should just make that like a holiday. I know, or coming at noon. Or... Well, no, is, isn't uh, January 1st National Hangover Day? First time I hear it. I've always heard it was the 18th, but I, I think we call that the Irish flu holiday. <laughs> yeah. um, a funny, uh, one little topic that I, I, I do want to bring up. Uh, I, I saw this on social media, and I want to get your take on it, because we've talked about this guy a little bit on previous shows. What do you think about Nicolas Cage being uh, picked to play uh, Joe Exotic as the Tiger King? Oh, I got to... I got to... <laughs> <laughs> um, but Nicolas Cage is literally Nicolas Cage in every role. 
Like he plays the same guy. He just is himself. Like he doesn't play roles where he takes on a different personality. Right. He's always that like strange and awkward intensity and nerd <laughs> who had got like accidentally got a samurai sword because his mom bought it for him. <laughs> <laughs> you know that guy. I know you know that I, guy. I know that guy. I think I right. love that guy for a second. Yeah. <laughs> but what about his look? Because I think that the look plays like well. I think with. I'm sure you know Hollywood's going to do all the crazy makeup right. shenanigans on. Well, the hair. Cause I are think they going to make a movie? They're making a yeah. uh, a TV series. There's a mini series about the events that have, that have happened and up to up to now. But I don't know. I I mean, I have mixed feelings about Nick Cage being. Me too. I'm the, I'm the Tiger King. I'm conflicted. And there's another one. He may he may kill it right. He owns awkward. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, right? <laughs> Come on, he doesn't? Who, who do he think, really is. Who do you think would be like a, a good uh, actor to play Joe Exotic? Oh, phew. you know, I I want to first interject that I, I, and we had mentioned this before, that I feel like Joe Exotic and the whole Tiger King, I'm like, that is so Florida, even though it happened yeah, in other states. it is. I'm like, as, as weird as it was, <laughs> like, it didn't seem weird for what we're used to here mm. in Florida. We're, we're used to a lot of weird things here oh, yeah. in Florida. Yeah. Um, the interaction that happened on uh, 50 and uh, Mills oh, a few yeah. weeks ago. That oh, I didn't hear about that. Oh yeah, I'll tell you later. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll share it it's not PC. <laughs> um, not day for work. Yeah. <laughs> um, how, how was how was your week? How was uh, uh since we last we did our show? Uh, I feel like I've been busy. Mm -hmm. It's good busy, right? Mm -hmm. We're moving things forward. Really hard on some agreements, you know, um, making sure that we, we continue to be there for our clients that, you know, that we're not not letting this slow us down and finding you know, unique strategies to, to move cases along and, and work with people. So. We also filed our first appellate brief for, oh, for yeah, our clients. We took yeah. that case pro bono. So. Yeah, we did a pro bono um, appeal. So we filed our first appellate brief so that was a busy it was yeah mm -hmm. it was it was busy, busy weekend yeah. Yeah. so is is the appellate court uh more complex than your normal uh circuit and civil court complex no but maybe just more rigid there's more rules to follow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, gotcha yeah let's see yeah. uh I'm just sorry. stuff we're not used to i feel like if it were where we were what what we used all the time it was easy to figure out but if it were what we did all the time i think really it would be more simple there's less leeway. There's um, the the factor of the unknown with the particular judges, what a judges what a judge would prefer. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of judicial preference on things. Okay. And I, I have one case in particular right now where my opposing counsel has a very strong belief that they don't need prior agreement or or to um, meet and confer with me, uh, but they believe that we do mm -hmm. for them. So the rules wouldn't apply to them only to us. Of course. Oh. <laughs> Again, this is the ways that we have to advocate for our client, and and it's it's all these little things that you I, I think don't get see don't get noticed behind the scenes. Right. That we have to advocate in these ways where you know you have to do all of these things and tell all of these people and have these meetings, but I don't because you don't get notice of that. Oh, really? <laughs> Let's, let's ask the judge. Why don't you? Is it common that uh, opposing parties or people like that like pull cool moves like that? Yeah, they try. Oh yeah. I'm I I think and you know that I'm particularly good at dealing with it because I I have you know my my opinion is you opposing counsel don't tell me what to do. I will work with you respectfully all the time. I really will. And I will do whatever it is that that needs to be done to be res responsible and courteous. I am sure not going to let you tell me I can't do things to advocate for my client because you would have preferred something different. Mm -hmm. That sounds to me like your preference and not my obligation. Right. You can't cherry pick the rules or rules apply to everybody equally. Mm -hmm. And also to the rules that people forget are also the rules of ethics. Right. Yeah. You know that this rule exists. You can't just ignore it. Yep. Be kind. Follow the rules, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys ready for the first one? Yeah. All right. Sure. Let's do it. I'm putting it up right there.
I have screenshot conversations from my husband and how he tortures me psychologically and mistreats me in front of my kids. What can happen if I file for a divorce and I don't have a job? So those two sentences do not relate to one another. So I don't know why you told me that he psychologically mistreats you um, in front of your kids or how a screenshot would equal that he mistreats you in front of the kids. Unless your screenshot also takes a picture of your surroundings and that they were verbal. Because someone can send a message on a phone and this is not science I'm revealing to anybody. Mm -hmm. You can say anything on your phone and if no one's reading it and it's going to a recipient that it's not being read, how would it be in front of your children? So those two things do not match with each other. So I, I have some, some questions about that. So in Florida, again, Florida's no-fault divorce state. Mm -hmm. So the fact it's not illegal to be Oh. Yeah. I think um, we should have that uh, that bike like right there yeah. when we go on. We are in your office. Yeah, or I should get like a little stick with it. I'm gonna have one that say it depends, and then one that says it's not illegal to be an asshole, right? And then I'll just like put it up on the screen. But I, the his him mistreating you psychologically is absolutely a reason why you should divorce him. The only person who can decide if he needs divorce is you. Get your divorce. Get away from him. Don't take it. Don't listen to it. Um, but mistreating you poorly in front of your children is a reason to separate is a reason to have that figured out if you need to prove psychological harm to your children psychological harm to you i'm so sorry no one cares and and i care of course because you don't deserve that and and it, i care so much that i became an attorney who believes that i want to be your helping hand to pull you out of that situation that's that's my 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 internal and I'm pulling people up from falling over a cliff of that kind of harm. But the courts don't care, right? It, they, they, they just don't. They don't have the capacity. It's not illegal. It's not a crime. It's not a harm. But who our courts care about are your children. So if he's like that with the children, let's get you some services, right? Let's get you some professionals, some guardian ad litem, some psychological evaluations, some, you know, parenting coordination, some parenting courses, whatever, whatever kind of services might suit your unique family, right? That's how we prove that in court but it's only relevant related to your children and how you guys co-parent. These allegations or this scenario is very fitting with allegations in a petition for domestic violence, but a person experiencing this kind of a scenario would have a hard time proving psychological abuse. And the only way that you can prove psychological abuse is with an expert. So even then, if she were thinking about, or he were thinking about, is it she? Yeah. Yeah, she, she, yeah. Well, she, she would, she would, maybe she would still have a hard or if it's not physical violence, but it's just um, it might be a he. Might be he. You're right. He has a husband. You're right. Well, he's white. Um, <laughs> so, okay. And then, what can happen if I file for a divorce and I don't have a job? Again, no one cares. That you don't have a job. Doesn't matter. If when it comes to figuring out what, in, again, it's the no-fault divorce state, right? So you're not having a job isn't relevant to anything besides us figuring out what the appropriate amount of alimony or child support is. So alimony is based on need and ability. And child support is, you know, based on your percentage share of the responsibility for the children. So that's delineated by a number of factors. Of course, we can go over that another day, or when you naturally call me for your consult. <laughs> um, but there, if you are unemployed or underemployed, there are ways and tactics that can be utilized to prove to the court that you are capable of being employed. And taking care of your children actually isn't going to be a good enough reason to be unemployed. Everybody knows about daycare. Your preference not to use daycare, again, is going to, the court is, that's going to fall a little bit on deaf ears. Mm -hmm. So it's important to note that if those are issues to you, I would work very hard to come to an agreement, right? Because the court's going to say, well, looks like you could use daycare like anybody else, or they just impute you. They don't require you to get a job but they, they do what's called imputing your income. So they basically go, you don't have a job? Well, we'll just assume that you could have this job. So with that assumption, this would be your income. You can choose to get that job or not, but you could. Yeah. So, so get off your lazy ass. Or, or don't, like, but you don't, he doesn't pay you for your desire not to be employed. Mm. She. She. Tear. 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 Plenty of women pay yours.
Okay. All right. Thank you for that question. The next one is, I will be 18 in two months. I am a single mom whose baby daddy <laughs> is in boot camp. Uh, uh, can I move out now? Uh, move out of whose house? I mean, is it... Is it so it's so if she's daddy about daddy? to be 18 in two months, it sounds like she's probably still living with either his family or her you family. Can, you can do anything you want. Welcome to another <laughs> <laughs> Um, If you're going to be 18 in two months, the only people who are going to stop you from moving at this time or have the capacity, ability to stop you from moving are your parents. Um, in general, there's, there's kind of this quasi rule or assumption that once you um, get married, you're emancipated. Having right. a baby doesn't emancipate you. I was just about to ask right. you that. Like, if, if a 16 year old has a kid, is she still considered a minor? A minor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. learned, I learned something new right there on that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, what my suspicion is, is that capable of caring for that baby and she has a job you know these are the more practical things to think about when it comes to if you should move out you know um, can you support yourself can you do whatever it is you need to do also if baby daddy is in the Navy I don't know what the status of your relationship is but the Navy has considerable financial benefits for the parties with marriage they are very supportive of you know the, the family. family unit yeah mm -hmm. So there are a lot of assistance and housing and things that you and TRICARE that your baby could have if he doesn't already put your, your child on um, TRICARE. Um, so I hope that you get child support because the Navy will enforce that very well for you. Um, and if you don't, let us know or call the Department of Revenue. So that's, um, you know, th those are the things that I think are worth mentioning for for this purpose but baby and you'll be 18 in two months it doesn't sound a lot to me i don't know your family dynamic like your parents are going to stop you if you're capable of moving out and, and you want to i mean if you have the means go for it right yeah 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 Mark. <laughs> all right thank you for that question let's go to the next one here we go can i build a case uh for mom to move back to florida since she had my baby no uh, all right yeah. Uh, I, I'm not on the birth certificate, and she is living in Rhode Island. So you answered the question before I could even finish it. Yep. So w why can't he, he build a case? Well, if she had your baby in Rhode Island, Rhode Island has what's called UCCJEA jurisdiction. So UCCJEA was put into place because there was a time before the UCCJEA, which is uniform and and accepted in most all states. I think Massachusetts is one of the states they haven't accepted it, actually. But I believe Rhode Island has, don't quote me on that. Um, that you, what parents were doing is they were kidnapping the children and going to a state that had the most preferential custody treatment for whatever the circumstances were or their case. So they were using the legal, the states and their ability to have different laws against them. Okay. Right against the system, they were kind of manipulating the system. Forum, Forum shopping. shopping. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't. We didn't reference yeah. that. <laughs> that <one. laughs> um, and that, you know, it, it was to stop this parental kidnapping once parties separate. So, where the baby is born is where UCCJEA jurisdiction is. So you would actually have to fight that case in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. Right now, am I saying that Rhode Island doesn't have some Petition. Um, oh, we we have a question with the texting. Oh, okay. Um, if uh, excellent, I will. Next. Um, so we, you would have to file your documentation in Rhode Island. Am I saying that Rhode Island may not grant you the ability to have your child here in Florida? No, but I'm saying that you couldn't file here in Florida, and you'll have to go begin that case in Rhode Island and. Rhode Island could keep jurisdiction. There are ways to move jurisdiction here once the child comes here, or if an order is granted bringing the child here. So you can find a way to bring your child to Florida, but it, it's I, I'm not sure exactly how progressive on dad's rights 
Rhode Island is. I know, obviously, I practice in Florida, but you will have to. I I know a Rhode Island attorney who does family go. law, <laughs> but <laughs> I will I will have to definitely. Um, You'll have to go there and fight it. I would do it immediately because the sooner you do it, the more of involvement you can have in your child's life. Um, so yes, you could build a case to have the child move here. Um, it depends, obviously, it depends on your circumstances <laughs> if if that will be successful. Because I, I, if I'm not mistaken, the burden is a bit higher in Rhode Island. They're a little, a little less dad friendly, right? Mm. So. Uh, best case scenario, you get a nice long distance parenting plan that you, I don't even know if they use parenting plans, I don't know, I don't know how they do it, but here, mm -hmm. it would be a long distance parenting plan where um, you have substantial summers and winter break, holidays. And holidays and spring break and stuff like that. And that does really help you establish a, still a strong bond with your child, but do it ASAP. Don't waste time. And you said we got a message through the uh, text, right? Yeah. So someone said, I just want information about visitation and time sharing with my child. What's the first step I have to do? Call me so that I can. <laughs> step one, dial. I can, uh, yeah, dial 407. No, we can, um, we should set, set you up with a consultation. We, we will make sure that we're responsive to this in just a moment. But, um, you know, uh, the, the first step would be to, to speak to us so that we can make sure that we, we, you know, it may not seem like it when people are talking to me about, but Gabby and I, we both go through a number of checklists in our mind to know if we can, e we even have the capability of helping you, mm -hmm. right? Where's jurisdiction? This gentleman whose child was born in Rhode Island, I can't help him because the no, child is- No jurisdiction over mom. Right, and I'm not licensed in Rhode Island. That too. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know, I, we can't. So. In, in Rhode Island, you could go, but I'm happy to connect you with the, the person who is up there if you absolutely need it. Mm -hmm. You know, we can help you out with that. So another another thing I, I go through about visitation is, was your parental rights established? Do I need to deal with that hurdle? Do you have a court order from another state? Do I need to bring it here? Are the children here? Where are the children? How long have you seen them? Like, what, what kind of expectations could we have for your visitation? and time sharing really we call it time sharing and not visitation so you know we, we have to go through this litany of mm -hmm. were you married or or not right because some people say oh i want i want custody and immediately when someone says i want to get custody and visitation over my children my because of the way florida law is set up my mind goes immediately to thinking that you have a paternity action right because you know when you're married you automatically are granted the same rights to your children mm -hmm. right that so when you Feel like you need to find a way to obtain your custody i feel like you you i assume you don't have it right again you another reason it, right? yeah another reason i have to talk to you and hear you out and answer your questions so it's it's you gotta what's the first step the first step is talking to me let me let me answer those questions even though it may not seem like i'm i'm getting that information but you know are are you what was i've had people call me where their parental rights were terminated and they're like oh i i want to undo that yeah. You have to undo the termination of parental rights, and I'm like, no, no, no. Good point because um, a Department of Revenue action can also establish your paternity. Right. So well, right, exactly. We can move your case forward in in a different way. Exactly. Because you already have a child support order, and I, and I have to address it. Right. I have to make sure that I include it. Um, so, you know, our appeal focused a little bit on that. Yep. Um, because that was one of the fundamental unfairness that happened. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's important to check people. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for that question. And that was actually from the texting services. So I'll get that number after the show and try and get them to uh, set them up for a consultation. All right. The next question. We already notarized our divorce agreement. Do I still need to pay her expenses until the judge of, uh, judge's approval in two months? Once you sign, it's in place. So it doesn't need to be actually filed? It, it does need to be filed because you need your divorce, right? You need a judge to go, oh, yeah, this is legitimate. Because what if, you know, for example, and I know this is obviously not what you did, but if the judge reviews the agreement and part of the agreement was something that's illegal, that right. is, is unable to happen, for example, Sexual services, you mm -hmm. cannot contract for sexual services, get consent. But anyway, <laughs> you can't contract for 
PSA, right? Um, <laughs> you cannot get a contract for sexual services. So if that was in your marital settlement agreement, the judge could not grant your divorce if that was one of the terms, right? I'll pay the mortgage if you, you know, take care of me. me. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. So no, but they have to make sure that that all of it, and, and you know, there are other rules of procedure. I, I make that joke because it's the funniest example. There are much more dry examples of what what this means or how this could work out in in your scenario. And usually in a divorce where it's just financial, mm -hmm. you don't have children, mm -hmm. the court pretty much will accept it. Mm -hmm. But if it involves children, the court will need to review it and approve it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not as simple as, you know, like because you guys want to get divorced. Right. But I, I want to invite you to respond is once their agreement is signed, is it enforceable? Do they act upon those agreements? Absolutely. Yeah. So you, can, you, can, you can stop paying your expenses at that point. Once the, the, the pen lifts off that paper, mm -hmm. he's good to go, right? Right. Right. It's a contract. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. Where'd it go? Ooh. If I filled out the marriage license and did not file it after, am I legally married? Um, all right. So are you legally married for the purpose of it being recorded in the state? No. But you are married for the purpose of if you were to have a divorce you it would be held as a marriage it would be considered as a marriage so your wife could still divorce you get all of the nonsense around that mm -hmm. right all of the things you think you might be avoiding because you think you're witty um because it wouldn't she would still have everything she would be entitled to in the event of a divorce mm -hmm. So not mailing it in really just means you're kind of a jerk. Oh. It's a de, de facto marriage. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what they call it. That's the, the legal term. Um, so, so even if you didn't file, let's say, for example, I'm just hypothetically, yeah. uh, I get married, you know, we signed the paper, but I, I, I put that paper in a, in, a, in a safe box and I never filed it. Mm -hmm. So we're technically married or not married? So for the purposes of obtaining a divorce, you're married. Okay. I, she would have to produce that. Have you ever filed? You work for me all day long. Have you ever filed a marriage certificate? Never. I, I've had clients hand it to me, mm -hmm. and I'm like, that's nice. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so noted. Let me put that right in the file. You know, if they wanted to give it to me, I'll take it. It's okay. I'll put it in the file. But no, I don't file them. I don't. They don't confirm it. Same thing with paternity. Okay. Very rarely do I do paternity checks. Five, six cases where we requested paternity test. Hmm. <laughs> no, if you don't challenge it, what what the court is like? You're here for a divorce. If you know you're married and you know you're married, we're, you don't need to prove unknown. You don't so need to prove things you agree on. So basically, for this uh, this person's question, they are married. Well, your wife can get a divorce from you. Um, yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> your wife trying to maybe change her name with the marriage certificate, she might not be able to have that certified copy right. to change her name. Mm -hmm. That's when you need your marriage license. Okay. Change your name, military documents, yeah. stuff like that. All right. Thanks so much for that question. And this one, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it to Gabby if if you don't mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Gabby. Let's see. Here we go. Wife and I are dealing with a crazy situation. She wants to put our dog down because of old age. I work from home and able to tend to him. Please help me save my dog. Okay. Well, so dogs are considered, or say pets Wait, in general are considered. Is this a divorce question? Actually, it's not. <laughs> it's, more a, it's more a property question, right? Right. Like pets, their yeah. property, yeah. they really, they're so, not like children. They're not. I know that we love them like children. They're not. Mm -hmm. So basically so, at this point, they have to resolve it on their own. And it's, it's girlfriend and boyfriend, right? No, he said wife. Okay. Wife. Yeah, no, it's, I suppose if they got the dog together, it's marital property. Mm -hmm. But what could he do to save his dog? Hypothetically. An injunction, but yeah. Okay, what is some practical advice maybe that we could give him to do with the dog? Sometimes the most practical advice is non-legal. Right. So 
I would I would ask what's what's going on with the dog and is it terminal? Is it in pain? Are you relieving the dog if you put him? You know, I, I suppose down? the only thing that you could probably do to save your dog mm -hmm. is pick up your dog and move out. Sure. What are you gonna do? Give me the dog! I'm putting him down. <laughs> no, she's probably not gonna do that. Go live with your aunt, go live with your mom, go live with your cousin, go get an apartment until the dog happens that's naturally if that's your preference. But if you and your wife are fighting about this and then you're asking a divorce lawyer, um, perhaps you need to do a little soul searching. Your initial reaction was she wants to kill the dog and I don't. So do you think like, I need to talk to a divorce lawyer. Like, what a leap, right? <laughs> you know, we don't just we don't agree on what to do for the dog. Divorce lawyer, you know. But you know, <laughs> uh, what? Now I get it. We love them like our children, and it's this is you know an important topic, and yeah. and I I don't I don't deflect from the fact that your your dog is a valuable member of your family. I don't. But again, um, maybe you have other. If this call actually reached me and they set up a consultation, I, I would I would put on my my counselor hat right. and say, oh, are there other things that are going exactly. on? Because yes. that, that's what gives me concern. You know about, about it. It gives, it. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Like you you have more in it, and just you know he probably isn't ready for a divorce, but he's he is pouring some you know deflecting, deflecting right? some disdain on, on potentially the fact that there are other issues in the marriage mm -hmm. is you're you're pointing to this so as a divorce lawyer we see that a lot that I you know we have to kind of redirect people and say hey that's not the point that's not how this works I did that say you mm -hmm. were listening to me right oh, yeah. um, you know a very wonderful lovely bright woman you know just really struggling with the the custody situation that's going on in her case and she goes how, how can this happen right she just it's not fair it's I'm like, well, it's only not fair because it's happening to you. Mm -hmm. If you heard this story and, and these these facts that, you know, on, on their surface, mm -hmm. right, just the surface facts of what we know to be true. We know that these things are true, right? I know that what your truth is and what you can prove is different, which is why we're handling your case because we have to do that. But on the surface, these facts, you know, as true because they are, the court had to do uh -huh. something, right? So I'm... I'm I understand that it's not the the effect on it is not exactly what they're saying the conclusion they're coming to, but the very brief facts that they have are right. So you know. Thank you so much for that question. Hopefully you can save your dog. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's All right. So we'll, this one will go for uh, for both y'all. How do I subpoena the father of um, of my child uh, bank account statements? The jerk is not paying the full amount ordered by the court. Well, if you have a Department of Revenue case, you can't. So you have to file a circuit court case because um, I I don't know why you need a bank account statement if he's not paying the full amount. If you have a circuit court case and not a Department of Revenue case, you can just file for contempt. And in contempt actions, if he had the a willful non-compliance and he had the ability to pay, then he would be responsible for your attorney's fees. But I mean, right now, during this yes. unprecedented yes. amount of unemployment. You read my mind. Yeah. It's hard. It's gonna be difficult to enforce, you know, baby daddy to pay so if he doesn't here, have a let's, job. let's play this out. Yeah. If I came to you and I said my the father of my children is not paying the full amount of child support, but he's making some payments. Can you hold them in contempt? No. Um, not right now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, under most scenarios, you probably can. Mm -hmm. That he had the ability to pay that. Mm -hmm. But if he's unemployed because of present circumstances, the court's right. going to go, he didn't have the ability to pay. He lost his job. Not willful. Now, that doesn't mean that that amount of child support is not going to keep accruing and be owed. Exactly. But it does mean that the court can't, you know, Impose sanctions, attorney payment of repayment of your attorney's fees is one. Impose sanctions on on him. Mm -hmm. So figure out why. Maybe with him, you share a child with him. 
I, you know, hey, what's going on? Why are you not paying? And if it's because I lost my job because of COVID and I'm borrowing money from my mom, elderly mom right. to pay some child support because maybe he gets it that the, your children don't cease to need to be supported. Right. But, you know, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's a jackass and still has the same amount of money. <laughs> if that's the case, call me because we can hold that guy in contempt. Right, you still want to file the motion. Of course. You still file the motion. But you wait until we know he got his job back. Exactly. And, I mean, at least filing the motion gets the uh, the wheels in motion. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Awesome. All right, next one is, do I need to divorce even if I'm married outside the United States? I was married to my wife in Jamaica. I came to the United States two years after our wedding. Uh, Drink of water. <laughs> that would be Two years after our wedding, is my marriage recognized in the U.S.? Absolutely. Full faith and credit. So what does full faith and credit mean? If you were married and you both recognize you're married, the, the state you're living in will also recognize you're married. So full faith and credit, is that just about marriage certificates or is that about you know all laws and all orders? Hmm. I actually don't know. I do. <laughs> I have litigated this. So full faith and credit is, is actually to any order from a neighbor and say you have full faith and credit for enforcement. So a good example of that and how I know it is, is in my emergency orders, and most attorneys don't do this, but I do. We have one particular judge who, who is always very, she is very passionate about the law. So I have learned from practicing in front of her that if I provide her with all of the law and resources on why I can do something, I, I'll get as trite as the the, you know, constitutional law, and in one such emergency pickup order, I put the U.S. Constitution says, you know, U.S. Constitutional law, U.S. law, federal law says we have full faith and credit, and all states will recognize court orders and the statutes of other states. They recognize them. Now, the same laws aren't capable of establishment here, but if it's established in another state, we will give that full faith and credit. So I was able to domesticate and enforce an out-of-state custody order and because the case law, which I provided, was very clear that I can also put in there instructions that any and all law enforcement officers of any state, territory, or tribe are to assist in the reunification and in getting these children because we included all of that right. in our order. The judge signed off on it and it was, it was ironic because I spoke to another colleague of mine who said, you know, how do you deal with Judge Schmo, who's always so difficult and blah, 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 rejects things just to reject them. I'm like, she doesn't. I'm like, you need to do it the right way. So mm -hmm. she she protects herself from appeal. Yeah. And I, I was like, this is how you get it done. You need to make sure you put I'm like, she signs my orders quickly. I'm like, but I provide her with the case law. You just, you have to give it to her. So, so that you make sure that your facts match what are happening. Because if she feels like something is left out, She's just going to call you up and, and ask you the question. Right. Leave no question unanswered. So, yes, all court orders. So if you have, if your children were kidnapped, this is how you get it done. We, we, I file all these, and typically within about 48 hours, I can get a court order directing all law enforcement officers to assist with the return of this child. Thank you so much for that question. I don't know what happened. There, I think my my tongue just went a little numb. I'm I'm still going through the medication from the extraction and is your mic, is your mic on mute? Mm, yeah, mine is on mute, but it picks up through here because if we have the, both mics, it's going to echo and sound yeah. horrible. Yeah, I know nothing about this in person. <laughs> <laughs> Look pretty. Yeah. I can do that. That's yeah. easy. Done and done. <laughs> Next can a deposition stall a case? If so, can I object to a request for a deposition? Not worried about the deposition, but can a deposition be used? Well, you use deposition a lot, but can a deposition be used for a continuation? Can a deposition depose a deposition in, in deposing a continuance? Um, no. A deposition is one day. Why would you need a continuance for a deposition? Why wouldn't you just schedule the deposition for a day before the trial? Kind of sounds like this guy's trying to stall. Yeah, of course. Exactly. Of course. And that, that you know, really, we really could identify that to the court and mm -hmm. and generally the way that I would defeat that right I is I would provide dates before the trial hey we're available this date this date this date also too if if it's not relevant if it's not like an absolutely relevant discovery or you know evidence is going to be used at trial anyways mm -hmm. or it's not admissible move for a protective order exactly exactly but if it's 
the petitioner or the respondent. You know, you gotta. So, so probably not. And their failure to ask for it, you know, last minute probably won't go exactly over well. Not yeah, the judge won't won't agree that that's not good enough reason. So if you just don't want to be deposed and you're you're not agreeing to the deposition, then you become the problem and the continuance will be granted. So make yourself available for the deposition. Exactly. Give them availability. Yeah, sure, you can depose me. Stay for the trial, no problem. Wow. All right, thank you so much for that question. Uh, next one. Does husband of one year have right to refuse his obligation to get wife pregnant? I do not feel we're ready and she is threatening to divorce. We have, I have many questions. Do you have many questions? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I have an answer. Does husband have the right to refuse his obligation to get wife pregnant? So I, I feel we're not ready and she's, there's you're in America. Yeah, there's no to do it. So nowhere is there an obligation? There, no. When you're married. I mean, maybe there are some people that follow no, no. a specific that, religious kind of. That, that's not a law. It's not a law. This is legal advice. If you need, <laughs> if you yeah. need assistance from your rabbi, reach out to him. Okay. There's no obligation. There's no obligation. There's no obligation. That's not. I get divorced if if she wants children and you don't. That is a very good reason to divorce your Absolutely. husband. If what was very important to you is becoming a mother, or what is very important to your wife is becoming a mother, and she feels as though it's an indispensable part of her life that she needs, and that, that I, I, uh, like, <laughs> No, you, you don't have an obligation to do anything. It's not like irreconcilable differences too. Like once you kind of reach that point in a relationship where this is really important to me and the other person is like on the other side of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. That's the perfect example, right? And no one has, these obligations aren't real. And and if they were, people who, who cannot have a baby because of a medical condition, yeah. They should be divorced from. They're not worthy of being loved in a marriage. It just doesn't follow a lot of logic. Um, and I, this question is being asked by this husband, and I, I hope he had the opportunity to watch this. Um, how about you guys like talk to each other, see a counselor, or you know, babies? Also, intrapersonally, I have a baby. He's a he's my baby. <laughs> um, that you find a way, right? You you find a way to make do or make it work yeah. with your baby. Now I get it. If he doesn't want a child and that's not what he wants, that's not what he feels like is good for his life or he is desirous of. You guys have to have these conversations together again. Yes. Maybe she doesn't want to get pregnant. Maybe they can adopt. Adopt is a good thing. Well, he doesn't. He thinks I'm not ready for a kid. I'm gonna go through adopting. He's gonna go. Yeah. I don't even want a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> and it's, adoption is an extremely hard process. Right, and he's gonna, gonna be like, no. interview. <laughs> really, really, well, really. He, he can purposely bomb that interview. So he that's don't. true. You're right. That's, he's going to. Yeah. I don't. I don't really think we're good. And the adoption agency is gonna be like, <laughs> why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your yeah. time. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. I am 18 and my brother is 13 and our parents are divorced. Can he live with me? I was wondering if it is legal for him to come and live with me instead. I'm 18, my brother is 13, our parents are divorced. Can he live with me? I was wondering if, um, if there's a dependency action in the state of Florida, that's where I practice, is trying to terminate your parents' parental rights, then you would be a very great candidate for a ch a, where the children should be. Be placed. If your parents agree, another example of how that's perfectly fine. If the parties all agree and that's fine, if your 13 year old brother is, I don't know, he may ask your parents and they agree, um, yeah, fine. But the parents have to agree, right? So the ultimate idea is, is that the parents have all the rights over a child who's mm -hmm. under the age of 18. Not a divorce question, mm. but you use the word divorce. So <laughs> here we are. <laughs> this kid knew what he was doing. Oh, it's okay. We'll help you out. Here. <laughs> yep. So we got one from uh, we got a two-parter uh, through the uh, Facebook, and 
Maris asks, uh, do you uh, have uh, practicing rights in uh, PA? I don't. Pennsylvania? Neither do I. I don't. And uh, I'm going to put up her question. Uh, Law Officer Aaron Morris, I have ex is deceased, and my son, who is 16, wants my husband to adopt him. Seems like there's some issues with finding the, uh, the forms to start uh, step parent adoption. Unsure what to do. So I'm here in Florida. If you were here in Florida, I could guide you through that process right. pretty easily, especially mm -hmm. where um, his father has been deceased. Um, it is a relatively, relatively easy process when, when those are your facts. Um, and there in Florida, they do have a lot of online forms. I don't know if Pennsylvania has the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I personally don't love the forms from the Supreme Court of Florida. Please don't tell the Supreme Court of Florida. I just said that. <laughs> but they're sort of user friendly. I think that's why they're they, so they are, simple. And they are. They're very simplified, but I think that they fail to meet some some preferred requirements. I I find just to be requirements, but it's really kind of service based to make sure that I'm protecting your your future and what your court orders need to say. Mm -hmm. I'll get off that so far. <laughs> Maybe just go to the Pennsylvania Bar Association and then look there. And and a lot of attorneys, you know, have the opportunity and they have low cost consultations. It's totally worth reaching out to. I, I always recommend reaching out to two or three attorneys, see who you feel comfortable with, Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. ask them questions, kind of, just so you get an understanding of what's going on. Because you know, internet law degrees are horrible <laughs> legal zoom messes up people's lives often i have had a couple of quite a few divorces that i've had to fix afterwards and it's really hard and really expensive and um so call a few attorneys see what you can do if you live here in florida even if your son or or his father was in pennsylvania and your son is now living with you i got you but um call a few attorneys see what they have to say see what makes you feel comfortable um, and if you don't like what you're hearing from those three attorneys, like keep asking the relevant questions that they all tell you the same thing. Right. <laughs> and there she says, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Good luck. Good luck. And I'm, I'm sorry for your son's loss. I don't know, you know, any more details about it and I don't need them, but you know, my, my son lost his father and I lost my husband. So that was not easy for me. So I guess I, I have a lot of sympathy on that. Well, I lost a loved one. It's never easy on, uh, in any way. Uh, can I get in trouble for going on vacation for eight days with my son? The trip is planned uh, from one Friday to the next, and the other parent will be missing out on uh, his weekend. Can they refuse? Uh, and, and they refuse to exchange. I'm interested in knowing the scenario. Is this a post-divorce case, or is this where you know the other parent has paternity action, or? Have there right. been parental rights established? I, I, do you, do you have it, a court ordered time sharing? If you have court ordered time sharing, you're violating a court order willfully. So that right there, yes, he can't get in trouble if for you, going on an eight day vacation. If you don't have a court order and this is just a verbal agreement that you have, um, no, you can't get in trouble. Oh, if it's a verbal agreement, you can't get in trouble. Mm -hmm. okay. No court order, no, you can't get in trouble. So all depending, if there is a piece of paper signed by the court saying that he can't, he shouldn't, and he'll get in trouble if he does. But if there's a verbal agreement saying, hey, I'll take him on these weeks, you take him on that week, so uh, back and forth, back and forth, uh, there's no violation if there's nothing in place. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's nothing to violate. There you go. So if you don't have an order, dude, go get a vacation. <laughs> have send, fun. <laughs> send us a keychain from uh, from your trip. All right. We we're almost to the end. We got a few more right here. And the next one is, can I file for divorce in Florida if I still have a Georgia license? Even though I'm originally from here, but still have my Georgia license. How long have you been here? And how can I prove it? Right. So six months is the, the minimum requirement. So if you have a lease, if you have some kind of liability bill, um, maybe a pay stub, if you have some kind of like proof of employment here. But that's that's it. That's all really all you need is, is just proof of residency for six months. But yeah, get your license here. Yeah, I think the rule is ten days, which yeah, everyone, no one follows. So <laughs> I, I, yeah, <laughs> don't. They're gonna come looking for you. The license, please. Well, no, I'm in the process right now, and I still have mine from two relationships ago. Yeah. But I'm still in the. I'm in you the have process. like licenses based on relationships. <laughs> awesome. Based on your life, yeah. yeah. 
Well, no, I hopefully should be finalizing that next week, and I should change it that at that you time. Do it online, yeah. I did do the uh, tag renewal on the online last week, and that was honest to God, so simple. I'm changing. I don't need to go to the DMV no more, yeah. or I mean to the uh, tag office. You can pay a little more for two years. That's what I did. That's what I did too. I renewed two years. Yeah. You pay off money. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I was um, I was so thrilled because I, I hadn't had time. They're very and they're opening up from nine to five, right? And it's, work. it's difficult, and especially with COVID, every place every place in uh, in, uh, in Orlando is closed for renewing tags. So I had to do it online. It was super simple. Everything is closed. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much. So he he can or he can't. Yeah, if he's lived here for six months. If for six months, and he can prove it, he can move forward with that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. But update your license, bro. Seriously. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. Uh, if I leave my uh, abusive bedbound husband, can I leave the utilities to run up on him? If I leave, can I have things turned off so he don't run up my bills? Do I put him in a nursing home? He's 55 years old, 650 pounds. So, no. 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 You don't think so? No. Um, the administrative standing Ooh, order. We're going to argue. The administrative standing order says that. They didn't say the divorce. This is true. There's no pending divorce. I also, I'm curious. There's no pending to... divorce. So with with that, you know, we can't assume facts. Facts not in evidence. Objection. <laughs> okay. This okay. is true. No, and no. It, it is because the standing order applies to when there is a, a pending divorce. This is true. However, um, I feel sorry, whatever it is that's happening with you. But um, your husband is bed bound, and he's abusive. Well, probably verbally. Yeah. And, yeah. and it may be because he, he might be in pain. He might be, you know, there, there are reasons, right? We, we see people who are struggling with their divorces very often, right? They can't reach both of them. They're not. I, <laughs> any number of things, right? You know, he may have some medical condition. There may be some psych issues. Yeah. Like, these issues compound, right? And we, we see people at, in, at their worst. So, you know. His best right now. Um, if you do not have a divorce filed, yeah, you can. It's a marvel. Yeah, sometimes you are free to not pay your utilities. That's true because the obligation is to both of them, I suppose. Um, sometimes advice that's good doesn't always have to be legal. And I would say that perhaps you should find a way to get him help before you just up and leave. Mm-hmm. As a human, or you know, I'm see now. I'm a little bit more of a savage. I don't know. You're so kind, <laughs> but in my opinion, if he's abusive, has been abusive, is unkind, whatever, whatever your your how you're defining abusive or what equals abusive to you and your family. Um, bye, Felicia. Yeah. Right, I don't. You don't. You, I you think you shouldn't stick around for that. I truly believe you. nobody deserves to be Absolutely. in an abusive relationship. And I, I sure, you know, I've we you know that we have had clients who are victims of domestic violence, and they've said, you know, I don't want to leave because, you know, he couldn't pay the mortgage without my pay. Right. I'm like that doesn't mean you stay. Mm-hmm. Right. That is just a mortgage. Your, your safety, your happiness, your, you know, mental solitude, like your, your yeah, ability. Yeah, your mental health is more valuable than a bill. utilities getting shut off. You know, you can always find a way to make money to maybe pay off that debt when you need your own um, lights turned on or whatever. You can always rebuild those things. Yeah. But the, the seriousness of psychological abuse and physical abuse are more lasting than ill-repaired credit. Absolutely. So, if you have no divorce filed, say, you may try. Uh, <laughs> right? It, that is no longer, you know, and this happens a lot. I, I have to, I have a, a fair amount of clients that I, I often have to remind when they go, well, what about this? And I'm like, not your problem anymore. Right? That's the point of us going through this process is that they are not your problem anymore. That what you have to focus on are these issues, separating this, not fixing their errors. You're not their mommy anymore. Right. Not your problem. 
And I actually, I'm going to get on my soapbox. Um, Do it. <laughs> so I, I, I was reading an article from someone about a woman who, you know, her, her husband like really required, and, and, and again, this is her discussion in, in, sometimes I guide people back to their marriage, right? I know that sounds weird, but I've done it a few times. Um, but, you know, she's talking to me and she goes, I don't know if I need this. And in my mind, whenever someone says that to me, I, I immediately think only you can make this decision. Right. Even if I know I would be ready for a divorce under these circumstances, I don't know if that's your line in the sand. So, you know, about how she ends up really being the keeper of her husband, right? She has to manage his, no. manage the household, right? So it's her job to say, for example, um, if chores need to get done, his excuse will always be, you should have, you should have told me you needed help. Mm -hmm. And it isn't that she needs help. That that implies that she's the only person capable right. of doing the things in the home, mm -hmm. right? So he just helps, not that he also lives there, right? Right. So she is not. You're your, not a team, right? You're not a team, right? It puts her in a position where she is the project manager. Now this happens in both. It has nothing to do with men or women, right? Um, I, I have a complaint, but it it happened this week with a woman. And I, I told her, I said, you know, one of the biggest reasons I believe marriages fail is because of the lack of being on the same team. More than it is cheating, more than it is not money. having money, it's always lack of being on the same team. Now, the stressors of cheating or money are, are what you will say, right? Deflecting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the real reason is because you guys weren't on the same team. Right, the underlying you blew that me. I did. <laughs> I, really, I really was going on level, but take with it what you will. Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, your interpretation is not always my intention. But so, you know, with that being said, again, marriages break down because you guys are not on the same team, mm. meaning you don't talk about it. And sometimes you're on the same team. And if you want to think of it like a football team. I was literally just thinking about Tom Brady right now. It's never, <laughs> um, he came down to my state. Um, <laughs> Are you going to go see him? Probably. I, I really want to go see both team. But anyways, back to you. Go. Back to your good <laughs> um, he, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's again, it's this idea that you guys don't talk. And and I mean, if, if we're going women and men mm -hmm. and trying to place these traditional gender roles, not always accurate, but right. I'm going to do it here in this moment. Um, women don't speak up about this. Not enough. They just keep, you know, slugging through and being a martyr. Because it's the expectation, right? The burden is on her that she's the one that needs to do it. And right. do the chores and all this other stuff. Uh, you should have told me you needed help. Right. Like you also have eyes. Right. So again, you're, you're it's not your. Yeah. You know. So again, it's a team. And husbands, wives, you walk by the laundry and you know your wife's been working hard all day. You have to throw a load in, right? Like she doesn't have to be the one to be like, and you will do this, and you will do that, and you will do this, and you will do that, and this is scheduled, so you need to go here. Like right. you it only can't be the purveyor. I can't be the project manager of it because if you're just the project manager, you cannot also be doing the thing, mm -hmm. right? You're, you're not the worker and the project manager. You're typically one or the other. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I kind of just want to defend for, for men real quick. Here we go. Um, th there are times where, oh, for, for me in general, I follow orders. If you tell me to do something, I'll do it. But if you expect or be just like leave it out there. There have been situations where like I've moved something or I've tried to, you know, put this away or clean thing up. And why'd you do that? Why'd you move this? Why'd you move that? Mm. And then we, you know, we get reprimanded for trying to help. And there are times where, you know, a man will help out the wife, girlfriend, significant other. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna stop you right there for one second. I'm okay. Jack. A man will help out the wife. You just assumed it is only her responsibility. When you initially got into a relationship, I'm sure that you did your part on doing laundry, on washing well, the floor, on doing the dishes. In sickness and health, and this do his part, do the laundry on Thursdays. I don't think that was part of the vows. But I don't think, I also don't think it was, could you manage me because I'm a baby, right? 
I don't think it was. Like, I'm a child mm-hmm. and you're raising me too. Okay, now, not, not going down that road, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that, you know, this, this ends up, and again, it's a discussion I've had with my own husband, my, my husband, who is really good with a lot of these things. But I have the conversation. I had the conversation early in our relationship. Right. Don't move in with me and think I manage. Like, you can see the laundry needs to be done too. Mm-hmm. I don't have to tell you. You know I work X amount of hours, <laughs> right? You know I, you know, stay up until 2 a.m. sometimes because i that's the only time I get peace and quiet yeah. to work on cases. Yeah, bruh. But um, I think that happens, the evolution of that happened or the, the flip of the, the, the those traditional like family roles mm-hmm. happened when women really started entering the, the workforce and started being equal competitors for these like workplace jobs to men because traditionally a man brought home the bread right and the woman stayed home with their family and so it was expectation if she wasn't earning the money to support the household that she would support the household by doing all the chores but then now women have these Nine to jobs. And how can I now do both? Exactly. How how do we do both? And so right here we're talking about the family unit, the family nucleus. How how do we make this work? And mm. that's what the breakdown is. We're not thinking about the we. It's we're thinking about you do this, and I just expect you to do it too. Right. That's, I that's it. I'm about to say something that I know I will get crucified for, but I'm I'm gonna go for it. Okay. Right. <laughs> uh, what if she's home all day? If she's home all day, that makes sense, right? Yeah. Again, it's this, this toggling of the breadwinner. Okay. Right? I'm not saying that you are completely absolved to clean up after yourself and Ooh. you deserve to be waited on. Right. But I get it, right? That's right. a different... Now, I... Like, if, if the same plate uh, is still in the sink for two days now, I mean... This is a problem, huh? Yeah. Sit close to home. Yeah. Previous relationship... Pre- I, salt in a wound. I am literally saying this from a previous relationship where... There were kids in the house. She would work. We both worked equal equal hours. Mm-hmm. Hers was more of a physical uh, work. Mine was more mental because I'm mm-hmm. you know, behind the desk taking calls, answering questions. Um, kids never did anything. Throwing it out there, but throwing it out there. The the <laughs> dishes would just pile up and pile up. I'm Again, like, you got you hit the nail on the head with my concept that this is a failure to be a team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? I understand that it seems like chores are not that big of a deal, but they are. Oh, they are. It breaks families down, yeah. and it seems silly, but the division of the household labor is really important. It really is. Like I, I, I would do, and that now, I'm, now I'm just preaching on my soapbox, um, I would cut the grass, I would do all the maintenance, I would do auto work, things like that. But then I, I, I saw myself entering a routine of the second I walked into the house, I became the dishwasher every single day. So I don't know if that also played a factor in, in that uh, disillusion of my relationship. But I mean, yeah, you're you're absolutely right. This it has to be a uh, a team effort. It cannot be 50-50, and you cannot be trying to take a pie chart analysis to your relationship either. That's true. You're right. Sometimes the load that's fair is not 50-50. It, it, yeah, exactly. So, you know, I, I like to use the football team analysis. Sometimes you're the water boy and sometimes you're the quarterback. Mm-hmm. But you have to do what the team needs. Exactly. Yeah. And you can't do it for the reason that, like, I, I'm doing it for the glory or I'm doing it for, like, yeah. what I receive. If you always pour into your relationship, you'll, you'll get that out of it. Agreed. Next time on <laughs> Psychology <laughs> with Erin, relationship advice. Mm. Dear Erin. Excuse me. Oh, there we go. Um, what was the, the last question we did was the going, oh no, here we go. We have two, uh, one more after this one. I live in Florida. My wife took my son without my permission and is heading to New York. How can I get my son back? Hold on. Jimmy Cruz, I do not serve all of Florida. It is mostly central Florida, but we are in the process of expanding. Where are you, Jimmy? If you let me know where you are, I can tell you if we practice there. We practice there. He's uh, he's in Kissimmee. Oh, oh yeah, I got you. I got you, boo. <laughs> um, um, yeah, right. he's a. We we grew up in the same neighborhood, so that that is a uh, childhood friend right there. All right, cool, Jimmy. Shout out to Jimmy. Yeah, <laughs> I assume Jimmy is your first name. Whatever. <laughs> um, so let me answer this question. Yes, you can get your son back. We can file an emergency pickup order. That is parental kidnapping. 
So even uh, we're not in the middle of divorce. Remember how I just talked about this UCC JEA parental kidnapping thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that one applies to this scenario right yeah, as yeah. well. I will file and you should immediately file for divorce so that we can have some divorce protections. Even if you withdraw your divorce petition, you can do that. But you get a lot of protections with filing your petition for divorce and an emergency pickup to bring the child back. You said that in one breath. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like when I, you saying that reminded me of Ace Ventura, you know, when he's talking about how the, how Roger Baxter was yeah. pushed and not suicide. <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> <laughs> what I just did, I didn't even notice. I just saw him in uh in Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh my god, it was so good! And it I was, haven't seen it yet. I'm, I uh, have it in my car. If, if you take it to your red box tomorrow. I mean, <laughs> I don't either. What? <laughs> you, I mean, why would you rent DVDs when you could literally just tell Apple TV for the same price? No, Apple TV was charging uh, 19.95 to be able to watch it because it just came it just came out. But Red, I don't know what they. Did. Okay, so you you got it. Yeah, there's I have an app. There's an app for that mm -hmm. where you can search where you can watch every um, every like title. Yeah. And this is how I figured out how to do my um, DC Comics <laughs> stream. Right. Um, you don't know, but I'm Batman. And we. <laughs> <laughs> my family and I, because of being quarantined, we did a. I looked up all of the DC movies. You guys told me you how often love, you guys watch them. We try to watch two to three movies like a week, or whenever we have a, like just a family and we talk about the movies. Whatever, it's just something to do. Because my son is eight years old, and mm -hmm. you know, being adult, him being an only child, he's very bored. And, you know, he's very a very social child. So, you know, this is hard because I'm like, be quiet, I'm working. You know, he just wants to play. <laughs> yeah, or talk. You know, he wants to talk. Shocking that I gave birth to a child that talks a lot. And shocking that you gave birth to a child and get his all his work done in like two hours. Yeah. <laughs> That's a blessing right there. It, 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 I sometimes I, I see so much of myself in him, right? That I gave him a, he has a strategy that he can't have his phone playing video games or do anything until his work is done. So I have all of his work ready on the day before his little checklist. And he'll come upstairs and he wakes up really early, usually like 6.30 or 7. Um, and it'll be 9.30, 9.45. He has to get his phone from me. And I'd be like, Mom, my work is done. I'm like, bring it to me. And I look at it and I'm like, nice job. You get your whole day's <laughs> worth of work in like two hours. I'm like, did you eat breakfast? He's like, I sure did. I was hungry. You know? And, yeah. Impressed. You have a very efficient son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, there is this app that has, um, there's this app that you can see where everything is and how much it is available. So because we have all these streaming services, we have Disney Plus because we have Verizon for a year, right? Mm -hmm. For a year because of Verizon. I have Amazon Prime because Who does not, it? right? Right. Yeah. So you have Prime Video that's included in your Amazon Prime. And then I have Netflix because, well, I don't know, crap for that. I ended up with Hulu because of Spotify. Like, I don't know, all this streaming nonsense. So I just can find out where to watch everything. So we just like made a list. And... Not that I usually just, <laughs> <laughs> you just say it into the fire stick and it defines it for me. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm an Apple TV. I'm, I, I do have a comic book question that it got, uh, I, I thought of earlier today and I want to get your- I love superheroes. Your, because uh, I feel like you actually have some good input on this one. But I got the last question for the day, and I'm just going to throw it out there. Is what a judge says verbally in court, but does not create an order for binding? It has been about three weeks, and we have yet to see a new order made or signed. Do we follow the previous agreement? Mm, there, <laughs> there actually is law. We just found it recently. We've known, but like didn't see the authority, um, that a judge's oral pronouncement mm -hmm. is the order right the act of committing it to a piece of paper with a signature is ministerial and and administrative in nature it's just for a record because people's memories aren't perfectly reliable exactly okay so basically what he said in court but not fit, but not putting on paper is binding yes. yes and and if you're having trouble getting that order I really recommend either calling an attorney or doing it yourself. 
prepare an order and email it to the judge or mail it to the judge or whatever. The judge can always modify that order or change it, but you kind of put the judge on notice. Mm -hmm. And if it's been too long with that judge, file, if you're in Florida, file and request a case management conference. Absolutely. And then ask and say, hey, Your Honor, I sent you this email. We had this and we really need your written order. Yeah. You know, sometimes they forget. They are people too. They, they, they manage a lot. They manage a lot. Their caseload is, you know, four or five thousand. Oh my goodness. A judge. Yeah. So if you can imagine that, you know, I, this one order that they have might have fallen off their radar, you know, be respectful and kind and, you know, not demanding of it, but say, hey, is there anything I could do to be more helpful? That's really, I think, the approach that you should take. Would preparing it help you? Would, right. would you know, I prepared it. Is, it. is it incorrect? Is there more that I could do? How could I inspire this? you know, add a convenience to you, Your Honor, because of course, I would need to prove some enforceability on this exactly. order, perhaps in the future, and not having this order may hinder that ability. Exactly. All right. Well, we do thank everyone for their questions for this evening. Uh, if you would like to set a schedule a conversation uh, with the attorneys, our number is 407-900-7451. Uh, go to our website, www.morris-firm.com. Um, now here's the here's the the kind of the question I wanted to ask you guys because I know nothing about DC Comics or Marvel or whatever. So I'm just the, gonna exit. Oh no no no! no, no. <laughs> it's all right, yeah, good. But still yeah, throwing I'm your kidding. two cents. Uh, I'm sure you, you're familiar with Wolverine. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. So um, earlier today, I was I was scratching my hand and I was scratching where basically Wolverine's claws would come out right there from from mm -hmm. his uh -huh. hand. Mm -hmm. Um, from in between the knuckles. In between the knuckles, yeah. You know. Boom. Look at you. <laughs> and I thought to myself, they extend out maybe about 12, 16, like they're, they're long. They are. And they don't bend. Mm -hmm. So when they retract, are they retracting to below his wrist or are they retracting into his hand? So we know, obviously, I tell this to my son because he's, I, I consider him very bright. But I have to remind him sometimes that I'm like, Connor, it's, it's superhero science, okay. superhero logic. So you have to just accept some of it. But this is how I would explain it. Is you know those, remember those um, light up wands that you used to have and like you would do one of these and it would go yeah. yeah. but it, it can collapse inside of itself? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In my mind, right, obviously this is superhero science. In my mind, that's what happens with Wolverine's. Because I thought, or whatever. I thought to myself, if they're retracting in, how but they, is he they able go, to bend his wrist? They go into each other like that light up thing that remember how you would yeah. go and it would come out, but into itself. It was like a pride lightsaber. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Lightsaber before they made cool lightsabers. Yeah, um, that's what I imagine that they're like. That it retracts into itself and it like links up very smoothly mm -hmm. um, when it comes out. But that's why it can come out that way. So and it's retract. so collapsible. With itself into his hand, right? So, and kind of okay. links together almost the way you want to think of like Lego. So it would be a very firm connection. Okay. Are you thinking about like like kittens with their claws? Is that how you're thinking about it? I'm I'm thinking it in the sense because like I remember there was one scene in in the movies where they show the skeleton, the animating skeleton, now yeah. getting really deep in, into it, and how there, there's there's a piece in in his in his hand that sh shoot out the claws, but. In the skeleton, it shows that the claws would react, uh, retract all the way up his forearm. So, if that's the case, how does Wolverine have a wrist? Have have a wrist, wrist? Yeah, without slicing his hand every time. Superhero science. All right. I know it was a dumb My answer is <laughs> oh, 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 doesn't doesn't he like um have that power? We can also like heal himself. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, but I mean, is he healing himself every time? You know, he. Opens a can, uh, opens a can of beer. Are they or... gonna be like a can of whoop ass? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Over the can of whoop ass? I was like, yeah. But um, no. Uh, uh, or maybe here's, here's my other superhero science. When this particular material, what do they call elementum? Uh, animantium. Animantium. Um, when it's inside of him, it is um, flexible. It is more cartilage-like on the inside of his body because of the chemical composition of his body. And that soon as it extends and it hits it oxygen, oxygen air, it hardens. So it still mm -hmm. looks like metal on the inside, but it is cartilage-bendable 
inside of his body because of the composition of his body. My rebuttal to that was when they created the adamantium. They have to keep adamantium has to stay in this liquid state. It can't be destroyed. But mm, not based on the chemical composition of his body. His uh, his chemical composition it only regenerates broken cells within him. That's why the cells can break down when they're no longer touching oxygen. Does this make sense? As an outsider not knowing anything, this makes sense. <laughs> no, she's right. She's the judge and she's like reasonable. So ordered. <laughs> right? Maybe the inside of his body and it's that whatever it is that regenerates him mm -hmm. also can break it down. Right. But once it then touches the oxygen, it, it hardens instantly. Okay. All right. I, lo I lost this argument. Fine. <laughs> Fine. You know what? You didn't lose it. You asked how. <laughs> not I present to you that this is. Right. Your question was but, how, lawyer. No, I saw. Oh. So you're saying that once it retracts back into him, he's able to bend the the, the, it, the material itself. Yeah, cartilage like your ears, on the inside of his body. No, it's not because his okay. It, Wolverine had, can regenerate any broken cell in his body. That's you know how he's able to heal. Mm -hmm. He went through the process where they put the adamantium on his existing skeleton. Mm -hmm. So he's you know he's on. He can't break any bone in his body, mm -hmm. making him a lot more stronger. But more strong. He, he was more strong. Uh, but with that said, you, you can't bend the the adamantium because the adamantium was you he, can't. He can't. Wolverine can. No, I don't think so. I think he can. I don't. I don't. I don't believe so. He, uh, he in fact doesn't. So how can you say he can? <laughs> because his his like you is, saw his where wrist when we had drinks with them last week. <laughs> I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna let it be. Right, but I, he does it. Right, I feel like we're on a little bit of an episode of um, um Big Bang Theory. Oh, <laughs> where like the the nerds discuss the mind. Let's look at the chemical composition yeah. of adamantium. Yeah, and and specifically <laughs> of Wolverine and how his body reacts to adamantium. <laughs> Neil deGrasse right. Tyson actually does these cosmic queries with uh, and breaks down comic books, movies all the time. But that's for uh, another episode. It was um, funny. What I don't know. I sometimes my my son and I do this, or or my husband and I will do it, and we'll kind of get into these. I'm like, well, this particular, and we just we get to that to the you know end of it, the where it ends up, mm -hmm. and um, I'm like, mm, superhero science. <laughs> well, I mean, the idea like can Superman shave? Hmm. Why would he not be able to shave? Because what blade would be able to cut his his hair? Well, his body is impenetrable. No one ever said anything about his hair because yeah, your outside hair, his body. Yeah, and your hair is dead cells. Damn, Aaron. All right, well, you shut me up right there on that one. <laughs> What's next? <laughs> I love Superman. I he is my favorite. I don't know if I have a favorite. He's my favorite superhero. Have you seen Henry Cavill as Superman? How could that not be? Yeah, he's, he's, he, he's, does, he does play a really good. Superman. Oh my he's god! Saw, like he puts Superman to shame. When I saw him in uh, the new uh, Mission Impossible, oh, he was amazing. That way. I'm not trying to you know sound I that way. I love the Mission Impossible. I love action movies. Same. I love them. I can see that. Yeah. yeah I do, I really do. <laughs> Speed Run. What's your favorite action movie? <laughs> Taken. Liam Neeson? Yeah, he's awesome. Liam yeah, Neeson in some DC movies? I'm like, yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> yeah, action movie. Ugh. Oh, I love I Am Legend. Is that an action movie? Yeah. Yeah. It's in. It's, yeah. it's one of my all time favorite movies, actually. Yeah. Accepted. <laughs> I got to say Fifth Element for me. Oh, oh yeah. That's, that's a good a one. Not my one. favorite, but I was like on. Um, like on repeat, I feel like in yeah. oh, yeah. a few years in my childhood, where it just like seen it so many times. That and Gladiator. I like um, um, Three Hundred. Ooh, for the same reason I like Superman. <laughs> <laughs> well, once again, uh, Dream Morris, Dream Monia, thank you so much for uh, for taking. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. And we will see. Oh, oh wait, I got to do my thing at the very end. Uh, the information provided uh, in this. Oh, line. you got to play the background oh, music. Oh yes, I do. That's going to be the new thing. Imperative. <laughs> <laughs> I actually timed out to. It's a new official.
what is the it? background music is. Oh, the God. information provided on this live Q&A does not and is not intended to constitute legal advice. Instead, all information, content, and materials available in this live Q&A are for general informational purposes only. Information on this live Q&A may not constitute the most up-to-date legal or other information. Viewers of this live Q&A should contact an attorney to obtain advice with respect to any particular legal issue. No listener, user, or browser of this site should act or refrain from acting on the basis of the information on this live Q&A without first seeking legal advice from counsel in the relevant jurisdiction. Only an individual attorney can provide assurances that the information contained herein and your interpretations of it is applicable or appropriate to your particular situation. Use of and access to this live Q&A or any links or resources contained within the site does not create attorney-client relationship between the listener, user, or browser, and website authors, contributors, contributing law firms, or community members, and their respective employers. It, the views expressed at or through this live Q&A are those of the individual inquirer in their individual capacities only and the law office of Aaron Morse. All liability with respect to actions taken or not taken based on the content of this live Q&A are hereby expressly disclaimed. The content on this posting is provided as is. No representations are made. The content is error free. Great job. That was perfect. We'll see you guys next Thursday. Bye. Thank you.